Annalisa Mickel was a 24-year-old devout Catholic German girl who died of starvation in 1976 after participating in an excruciating 67 exorcism rites over a period of nine months. The exorcisms were, of course, in lieu of being treated for her actual medical conditions of epilepsy and chronic depression. Those responsible were subsequently put on trial for negligent homicide, and the case became one of the most notorious in modern history because of the defence's claim that demonic possession was real in court. Annalisa Mickel was born on the 21st of September 1951 in Bavaria, West Germany. Her parents were both members of the Catholic Church, raising their daughters to live strongly under faith. Annalisa was brought up along with her three sisters by her parents, Josef and Anna. As a family, they went to Mass twice a week. They prayed and said grace daily and carried on many other traditions relative to living a fully Catholic life. Annalisa's mother, on the other hand, had some secrets from her past that she kept from her daughters. Anna, the mother of all four girls, had been involved in a premarital relationship where she gave birth to an illegitimate child, a girl named Martha. As punishment for sinning, Anna was forced to wear a black veil on her wedding day to make it clear that she was impure and someone who had crossed the boundaries of the church in the past. When Annalisa, her first legitimate daughter, was born, Anna pushed her hard into believing what the church had to offer. As such, the mother believed that she needed to save her daughter from the consequences of her own past sins, which might catch up to her at one point in the future. Annalisa and her sisters lived a normal childhood together, attending a school in the area and making friends who lived close by. They were normal, happy kids, free of worries. That was until the age of 16, when Annalisa's life took a turn. Seemingly out of the blue, she suffered a severe convulsion and was taken to hospital. Without prior history, doctors thought it likely to be a one-off seizure and sent her home after a couple of days. After the incident, Annalisa continued with her studies and lived a fairly normal life. Then, about a year after the first episode, Annalisa suffered another seizure that would again render her unconscious. This second was similar to the first, where her family described her as looking as though she were in a trance. Her body moved through a series of convulsions and she would shake uncontrollably. Her doctors diagnosed her with temporal lobe epilepsy, ultimately telling her that she would most likely begin to suffer from more seizures as time went on. This disorder commonly causes confusion, amnesia, hallucinations and, of course, seizures. In addition, some patients diagnosed with epilepsy show signs of Geschwind syndrome. Geschwind is characterized by several symptoms, including hyper-religiosity, or a psychiatric disturbance, whereby a person experiences very religious episodes that can interfere with normal everyday functioning. After this diagnosis, Annalisa was prescribed medications to help limit her chance of having seizures and combat the mild symptoms of her disorder. As the medications seemed to help, Annalisa enrolled herself into the University of Würzburg in 1973. With goals of becoming a teacher, Annalisa often stayed back from parties and social excursions while her friends went out in the city her peers thought of her as being overly religious and reserved, but Annalisa was really suffering in silence. After only a few months, it was clear that Annalisa was struggling mentally. The medications that she'd been prescribed were not helping. Chillingly, she started to describe seeing devil faces at various times of the day. After hearing about this, an elderly family friend of the Mickles planted the seed 
suggesting that what she was experiencing might be demonic possession. It was said that Annalisa gave off a strange odour, refused to drink or touch holy water, and showed troubling signs of unease when asked to walk past an image of Jesus. Annalisa herself started to believe she was possessed by a demon, something deep inside of her, and that her medication was not going to help. The situation worsened. Wherever Annalisa went, she heard demonic voices in her head, telling her that she would rot in hell and be damned for all her life. After months of these occurrences, she was at breaking point. Annalisa and her family sought professional help to protect her from the demons within. They believed that if they could rid her of the possessor, Annalisa could once again live a normal life without the hardships that she'd been experiencing. Her family approached multiple priests to assist them, but all of them resisted involvement and recommended instead that Annalisa seek further medical attention. It seemed the family was nearly out of options. Annalisa's thoughts and behaviour were becoming more extreme by the day. On one occasion, she ripped her clothes off and crawled under the table, barking like a dog for two hours. On another, she was discovered eating spiders and coal from the floor of her own room. She bit the head of a dead bird and even licked up her own urine from the bathroom floor. It was becoming abundantly clear to her family that Annalisa was no longer in control of her own actions. There was someone, something, causing this distressing behaviour. Finally, one day, Annalisa and her mother met a priest, Ernst Alt, who believed in cases of possession by demons and specifically thought it was true for Annalisa. She wrote letters to him, describing her thoughts and daily symptoms. Records describe her saying that she had nothing anymore, and that even though, quote, she wants to suffer for other people, this punishment is too cruel even for her to bear. Alt took it into his own hands to petition for assistance from the local bishop, Josef Stengel, who approved the request after some time and granted another priest to take on the case. Father Arnold Renz would conduct an exorcism on Annalisa to rid her of her suffering, on condition that the whole affair was kept entirely private. Exorcisms have a history in many religions, but specifically within the Catholic Church. For many years in the 16th century, they were conducted by priests to expel demons from their mortal hosts. By the mid-1900s, however, there was enough scientific evidence to prove that exorcisms were not a safe nor necessary practice, and most literature debunked the idea that a demon could exist inside a human. The hit 1973 film, The Exorcist, however, brought the act back into the public consciousness and spread the word worldwide about the horrors of demonic possession. In 1975, over a gruelling 10 months, Bishop Stengel would approve of more than 67 individual exorcisms on Annalisa, all of which were conducted by priests Renz and Alt. Some of the horrifying sessions lasted for up to seven hours and pushed Annalisa to the brink of unconsciousness in the arms of her mother. She had to be restrained in order to stop her from intervening in the rites since they caused her so much pain. Annalisa herself claimed they were battling at least six demons who possessed her. Lucifer, Cain, Judas Iscariot, Hitler, Nero, and an excommunicated priest named Valentin Fleischmann. It was said by her mother that these six beings fought for custody within her body, and when one of them made it through, they would take control by emitting a long, low growl. I'll play a section of audio from one of the actual exorcisms here. Be warned, it is quite disturbing, so you can skip ahead to the next chapter now if you want to avoid it. 
It's worth noting the ferocity and strength with which Annalisa seemingly channels the entities, often for hours at a time. Interestingly, she never complained of any pain in her throat following these extreme vocalizations. These exorcisms released thoughts from Annalisa in which she heard from her demons. She believed Hitler was telling her that people were as stupid as pigs until Judas spoke over him to claim that Hitler had no real power in hell. Throughout the sessions, Annalisa would frequently talk about dying for the sake of the collective youth of today and the priests in her church. She had knelt down to pray so many times during her treatment that she began to tear tendons in her knees and break her now brittle bones. The exorcisms were extremely draining on Annalisa. She lost her appetite and thirst, becoming a shadow of her former self during the course of the sessions. They took such a toll on Annalisa that she now weighed a staggering 68 pounds, her face hollow and drawn, and her once statuesque frame appeared skeletal and bruised. During the final attempt to rid her of the demons, Annalisa's parents had to slowly lower her to the ground as her frail body gave out. After ten long months of attempting to rid her from the demons inside, Annalisa passed away on the 1st of July 1976 from a combination of malnutrition, dehydration and fatigue at just 23 years old. After her death, Annalisa's story became big news very quickly. It did not take long for authorities to hear about the tragic circumstances of what was, in their view, a preventable death, and they were quick to blame the parents and the priests for allowing anything of that nature to go on. The tapes of the exorcisms were found and seized as evidence of what Annalisa was subjected to for a period of almost a year. There were a total of 43 tapes taken in for investigation, many of which had horrifying evidence of Annalisa's screams and devilish speaking. Both the priests and Annalisa's parents were tried for their actions in the court of law. The priests, Alt und Renz, were found guilty of manslaughter, resulting from negligence, and were each sentenced to six months in jail, followed by three years of probation. It still appears, however, as though both priests maintained that they did no harm to Annalisa, but instead were helping her, since in the court transcripts, Alt was quoted as saying he did not believe Annalisa looked like an epileptic. Anna and Josef Mikkel, however, were let off without any jail time or punishment, as the court believed they had already, quote, suffered enough, which is a sentencing criterion in German law. Practitioners in the court case testified about their beliefs that Annalisa's mental disorder may have arisen from, or at least, been exacerbated by her severe upbringing, as it was frequently suggested to her that she would be the bearer of her mother's consequences. In the case of Annalisa Mikkel, it seems as if religious beliefs took precedence over everything else for the people who were responsible for helping a scared young woman. 
at a time when medicine was less effective and research not as advanced, it was not uncommon to hear of cases similar to Annalisa's where poor souls believed they were held hostage, taken over by something inside them. However, had Annalisa Mickle's parents and Annalisa herself not been tainted by a superstitious belief in the supernatural, and had they accepted that sometimes unfair things happen to people for no reason, then Annalisa might have received the medical assistance she so desperately needed. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you'd like to support me and help this channel grow, please take a second to like and leave a comment. And do subscribe if you'd like to see similar videos in the future. Until then, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.